For more on this, I want to bring in Michael Smirkanish, the host of Smirkanish, right here on CNN. Michael, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Abby. So looking at these top three contenders right now, which candidate do you think actually brings the most to a Trump presidential ticket? I don't know that any of the three are particular standouts. I think that Trump's criteria have changed since 2016. I think then he needed to balance his lack of governance, and Mike Pence became a natural type of selection. He also wanted someone who had a, a more steady demeanor. Actually, that would describe a lot of folks. This time around, because he served as president, I, I don't think that he needs someone with governmental experience. I just think that he needs someone who gives him an edge, somebody who's going to bring something to the table, because if all of these polls are accurate, it's a game of inches, and the question becomes, who can deliver some votes? So uh, there is an op-ed by uh, Michael LaRosa. He used to work for the Biden administration. Uh, he said in The New York Times that he believes that Senator Rubio actually poses the biggest threat to Biden, uh, perhaps because of what you're alluding to, the draw of Latino voters in swing states, potentially. If you were working in the Biden campaign, would you agree with that? Do, would you see Rubio as more of a concern, perhaps, than some of the others, Doug Burgum or J.D. Vance? I'd be concerned about Marco Rubio for that reason, because I, I think that the Latino vote is a critical constituency. I would also be concerned about some of the African-American potential selections. Tim Scott, for example, not so much Ben Carson, because, you know, if the polls are accurate, Abby, and, and if currently Donald Trump is getting somewhere between 18 and 22 percent of the vote, uh, that would be a huge setback for the Biden campaign. I think it explains why tomorrow President Trump, former President Trump, is coming to Philadelphia and doing an event at Temple University. That's North Philadelphia. That's the, the heart of the African-American community, because I, I think he really is trying to make this play. So do you think that Rubio, though, he's kind of thought of as a bit of an institutionalist uh, in the Senate. He's the vice chair of the Intelligence Committee. Would he go along with some of the more kind of outlandish things that Trump personally wants to pursue? And then also this uh, Project 2025 uh, plan that's being put together by uh, outside allies of Trump's that aims to, uh, you know, upend the federal government and effectively weaponize it. He's very conservative, you know, and he's, and he's been in the Senate for a while, and he has a track record that's going to please that base. Is it necessarily going to swing independence? Probably not Democrats. What's interesting to me is that, politically speaking, with Donald Trump, you're, you're not dead till you're really gone, because each one of these three, and in particular, you'll remember, of course, Marco Rubio, all the things that were said between them, uh, it got vicious, right, yeah. when they were opponents on that stage back in 2016. And, and yet Donald Trump, I guess, in the end, very transactional, very much forgive and forget if it suits him. But would, but would Marco Rubio go along with it? I think that's what I'm wondering is, would Rubio be the one to say, sure, Donald Trump, like, let's go after your political enemies if, if he is, if finds himself in the White House as Trump's vice president? No, I, I don't think that he would. To be specific and answer your question, I think that he would be more Mike Pence-like. I mean, in the end, Vice President Pence didn't do what Trump was asking on that critical day in January of 2021. And if Marco Rubio were in similar position and the facts were otherwise the same, I think he'd probably be the same way that Pence had been. Which might be a pretty big problem for Donald Trump, considering that seems to be for Donald Trump. a litmus test Not for, for him. Of... Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Right. Michael Smirkanish, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Abby. And you can catch Michael's show tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern Time right here on CNN.